Okay, so Turbo, let's just get this thing out of the way <laughs> right now. Give us the backstory. How did we get the nickname? Uh, first of all, because I'm fast, and uh, you know, I always hype, like I always like kind of talk uh, trash about to the guys about me being the fastest on the team, and, and uh, nobody believes me at first, and. Uh, suddenly we played once after one practice and, uh, you know, my uh, speed and first step really got uh, um, recognized and since then they really called me Turbo. And I think it was Monte Morris that's taking credit for the new Yes, he did. It's like, like the art, like the R2 or r like a video game yeah. controller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You cool with it? You like it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, cool it's, it's, a, it's a positive nickname. You notice that how, like, as soon as something happens today in 2023, it, like, whatever the kids say, it goes viral or whatever. Oh, it's did crazy. you notice that nickname just instantly? Crazy. Everywhere. What did like, you notice? When, when did you notice it on social media? So, after they post uh, about, first of all, when I did that, that's when it went, like, viral. That's yeah. when it went, like, oh, Turbo, and then Cool Sweets, and then KP's tweeting too, and, like, you know, my teammates just hyping it up. It's just, Everybody just started walking with it. I want to go back to San Antonio. Yeah. The significance of that game, not only for you, but for the team. It's like the first time we won there in like 22 years. Yeah. Did you know that before the game? Yes. Because last year, like the year before my second year, uh, they had a presentation of uh, like pregame, like we do film before the game. And they gave a norm, like a date, January 3rd, 1999. And I look at the state and like this and the coach asked like is that date reminds you anything and then I look at it and I was like damn that's my birthday like but I want to say it's my birthday but I don't want to sound stupid you know like right. be like oh, it's, <laughs> oh that's my birthday and like what it has to do with the game you know right. and then yeah I said it's my birthday and then he said yeah that's right that's Denny's birthday that's the last time we won in San Antonio so since then it kind of stuck just in my stuck head with yeah so is that why you had a career night? Oh, I don't is know. Is all of that kind of like morphed into? You can say that, but it, it, it felt great. You know, it felt like a kind of like a circle closed. Yeah. Things. All right. So, I mean, you were terrific in that game, though. Like, like mm -hmm. what? What was different in that game as opposed to maybe really any other game you played? I mean, just being aggressive and like getting in a rhythm. Um, I feel like I'm way more aggressive. I feel like my teammates are trusting me more, and um, I feel like you know I belong, and and I I know I can play in a high level. It's just like now it's just just being consistent and adding things to your game, and, and like you know teams are gonna start scouting you and know oh he's driving like that, he's he's really physical. So okay, be able to change direction, be able to stop and and have floaters around. And those stuff is something you build with the time, yeah. and. Um, I'm aware of it, but like I'm having fun as it lasts, or it's gonna continue. I'm having fun until you know you gotta add some stuff. <laughs> Was it hard to see Rui leave? I mean, I know it's like the business of basketball. He's a teammate of yours, but yeah. you know, Tommy even said afterwards, you know, this was the deal was made to allow you to kind of expand your game. I mean, how do you deal with something like that where you kind of lose a teammate, but it actually benefited you in the long run? Listen, I'm a type of guy that grew up and I like in Europe, like you, you're like have a family oriented, like you really respect your teammates, you really treat them like you meet friends, you know, and it, it's different over there because it's, it's a business, but it's less of a business, like no yeah. trades and stuff. So here it's like business, which is crazy to me because you get you're get, meeting friends, you're meeting guys, you're meeting every day, and suddenly they're gone. And you know, but in the end of the day, like me and Rui got along, he's a great dude, you know, we had fun while he was here. Have you noticed a difference in the kind of the way you've played since that trade? I, I feel like the trade was the kind of like a, a, a set time since I played like that, but I think I also had some switch in my head too, like okay. being more aggressive and like, um, there was some conversation with that I had that I'm not going to mention the names and what we talked about in the team that kind of triggered me and made me take some things personal and and I um, and since then I kind of 
I kind of change the mindset. So I want to ask you about your relationship with Porzingis. Describe just kind of like y'all's your relationship. Um, I waited for like a European guy that had the same <laughs> steps as I took as a young kid. Yeah. And you know, we like, you can say like not a similar personality, but we both like kind of grew up and like we, we think like the same sometimes and like, it's just, you never know how you connect with people so good. So um, I'm just glad I have him. Like he helps me out a lot and he makes me have fun this year which with a lot of situations. So, you know, um, whether going to restaurants or- When did it coffee. start? Did it start in Japan? Did it start? Uh, I don't know. I can't really say something. It, it started like we had a like, good relationship even like last year kind of, but it like, it just grew with the time and as more we like, the more we hanged out, the more it grew, and it's like always. It's make it more easier even to play on the court when you are such a good connection with somebody, right? But uh, I can say hands down, on all my teammates, that's probably the best environment I've had in like terms of like meeting people and friends and stuff. Would you say you like you guys go to dinner? What's that? What do you guys like talk about? You know being in the states what's it like being in your we're just your we're just laughing about a lot of like sometimes maybe situations mm -hmm. or uh things that happen you know in the game or you know in the uh, in the team um you know we're just talking about life sometimes mm -hmm. or business or i don't know whatever you know subjects people talk about yeah um but he has a lot of experience so i like to hear his side of things and um about it. What's it like to be on this year's team? I mean, there was a 10 game losing streak, there was a six game winning streak. There's just, it's just been like a huge ebb and flow of a year. Yeah. But how would you describe it so far? Roller coaster. I like that we treat each other better now when we lose, because okay. the vibes weren't really good when we had that 10 losing streak or something mm -hmm. like that, eight losing streak. And I remember when we started the, the winning streak, it really boosted our mm -hmm. team chemistry. And I, I think it maintained for a little bit, you know? And uh, it's important for us to keep believing in each other and keep being together. I mean, this season is tough, you know? Mm -hmm. And if you're not, if you're not, if you don't have a good environment and everybody's not positive, it's, it's really hard to be a successful team. And it's, it's gonna be really hard to have fun as well. I thought you were really down after that Brooklyn game, but you did say something that kind of stood to, up. You, you were like, you know, I, I don't like losing. Like I like, you know, competing. And you, did you guys feel like you, those two games was just a real tough stretch for you? Some losses hurt to me more than others. Okay. You know, because some, some, like I'm, I'm, I'm being realistic. You know, like. Some some losses, I you know maybe it's not are they the best they, the, they get the best of us you know mm -hmm. like you know as much as we wanted to compete sometimes you've got to be realistic as much as you don't like to lose yeah um, but the Brooklyn game you know being up twenty and the Portland game being up twenty and losing like it's like for me it's like a, it's a breakdown like it's like oh like we we worked so hard like we we mm -hmm. we, we kicked our ass for what for losing like that I mean it's not cool for me but. That's, I, I took it from Europe, you know, in Europe, every game is a war. So yeah. I, I learned how to maintain here also to be okay, next game mentality. But I still have that like trauma of like, okay, I remember how it's been like losing in Europe. So um, sometimes they take it like- How like, do you get away from it? How do you like, you know, after, you know, Brooklyn, we're on the bus, we go to the airport, we come home, you drive home. Do you allow it to kind of end there or did it kind of like bother your sleep? Like how do you, when you say it bothers you, like how much does it impact you? It's really you? hard for me to, the, the, the sleeping part is really hard. That's where you think about all the day you had. Yeah. Sleep is hard. And in the plane, you know, I'm sitting with Corey and, you know, sometimes joking is, is good. Some, yeah. Sometimes laugh a little bit, take away the mind of basketball, talk about all the things, joke about about things and um, you know when I'm usually when I'm alone and I'm thinking about stuff that's where that's where it flares. Who's your best teammate in helping you deal with stuff like that? Where it helps you kind of like okay it's basketball it's our job but we've got another game the next day and kind of just help you kind of understand everybody it. I'll give credit to everybody but 
Uh, I think Anthony Gill, because he's been he's been here with me since day one. Yeah. So the next step for you is what as a basketball player? Like, where do you want to get better? I mean, I want to get better in so like I feel like my I like I'm excited to work because I I feel like my potential is really good. Mm -hmm. I feel like I can do everything solid on the floor, and I'm trying to like be better and okay, good at things or great at a couple of things, you know. Because I feel like I'm very versatile. Like I can guard multiple positions. I can play multiple positions. You know, like uh, I can share the ball with my teammates. I can mm -hmm. score when I need to. Um, and being both hands on the floor is really important for me too. And uh, you know, just maybe, maybe you know, adding more stuff to my game. You know, like more counters or like being smarter or being more mm -hmm. patient or like. Um, you feel like you're stronger to the basket this year than you've ever been? Yes, yes, but not every time it's good because I feel like a lot of times I'm aggressive, but a lot of times I, I'm still lacking the ability of like, okay, when to, okay, stop short or right. change direction. Or like, I, I'm still, it still needs to slow down for me more, but I'm getting really more comfortable of finishing around the rim. And, you know, some teams will be hard. You know, like mm -hmm. Cleveland, having those two big guys inside, you know, sometimes the pain's going to be collapsing. So right. improving my shot is going to be important for me. When you take the ball off the rim and you push it, <laughs> it seems like you play with so much joy when you can get the rebound and just go down on the other end. What's that like for you? I feel you? like I'm in an open world. I feel like I can do so many things. And um, I see everybody. And you know, when I go to the rim, I see the, the, my teammates on the right or left. And if I feel like there's a small guy inside, I rather take the layup. Right. But if they're open, I'm gonna always hit them, and just create action. You know, create something. You know, a lot of times I feel like our offense is like a little stuck, and that's why a lot of times I go upset screens or go or like flip the screen or you know trying to make some like trying to you know create some movement. And um, I think I'm doing a better job with that. When you came to this country, you were like, I just want to kind of experience it all and just kind of just figure out what's new here. You've been here for a while now. Mm -hmm. What's it like now being in the States and going to these cities and seeing Avdia jerseys, like when we go to New York or Miami, like what's that like for you now? It's the best. I mean, the support I get, the people that support me is amazing. I can't ask for any better. Uh, some my friends send me a, a on the Fifth Avenue NBA store, like they got, you know, the All Stars there, yep. and they got my jersey too. And mm -hmm. I was like, damn, I'm surprised. <laughs> I was like, uh, you know, so that that means your effect on on a city, mm -hmm. especially like a great city like New York. It's not even New York. Everywhere I go, there's support, but it's just it shows you the amount of love you're getting. So yeah, you know, I love them back as well. Um, we had Jewish Heritage Night, mm -hmm. and you and I spoke to the fans and they, they just kept coming in and just pouring. <laughs> Remember we were like talking and we were almost done they and they were, were still coming that's in the like that. mentality, you know, like just. They just show you just so much love and, yeah. and, and you pour it right back. How important is it for you to give back to your country? It's here? really important for me and I do, I am creating a foundation. I'm working about a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot, I'm planning a lot of stuff to do for Israel uh, and for the community there. Mm -hmm. And, um, the, the, the more I can show love, support to my fan base, everybody, like, the better I feel, so. Thanks, Turbo. You're welcome. Go look a vote. <laughs> Pleasure, man. <laughs>